When I'm talking in my own voice and speech. Don't ever take sides with anyone against the family again. I tend to sound a bit, uh, you know, stiff. Uh, look, maybe I should... Shut up, Ralph! Shut up! But when you have a character to play... Robbing the bank's a federal offense. They got me on kidnapping, armed robbery. They're gonna bury me, man. You get less inhibited. Say hello to my little friend! You are freer in terms of your responses to things. That's the lesson for today, Brett. <laughs> I'm Al Pacino, and this is my Variety cover shoot. Yes. Hiya, Frank. This is Jimmy Hoffa. Glad to meet you. Glad to meet you, too, even if it's over the phone. Whatever you need me to do, I'm available. When you research Hoffa, there's the books and there's the good scripts. You see, the good scripts help. But there's so much footage on everybody, you know, so you, you watch it, you study it, you think about it, you engage in it, and uh, you, you really devote your time to that who this guy is, and try to absorb him. The intensity of Hoffa was well known, and also his devotion to what he did, and, and the feeling that he was a visionary. He was only a kid when he was uh, working in these various jobs, and, and, and how the riots and the cops come and, and beat them up, and he was there, 13 stitches in his head, and but yet uh, he was fighting for something. He, believed in because he was on the other side of it. I mean, he was a worker, and so that, that was a, a key for me. In his own way, he was a sort of simple person. A lot of Hoffa was fair. He was a fair person. I mean, he, he treated people fairly. And somewhere he cared about things in that way, but he was also uh, temperate and interesting. So you charge with a gun? With a knife, you run. We're going to war with these people. War. Things have gotten out of hand with our friend. You gotta sit down, everybody says so. No, I'm not sitting down, I can't do it. This came along about six or seven years ago. Bob um, had gotten the book, and both of them have this massive research. And I thought, wow, they know what they're doing. And when I was about to work with them, when they were ready to go, I was doing something else. So I had to complete that. And by the time I completed it, they already had started. They were moving, the train was moving, and I jumped on it. And I had said to Marty, this thing's rolling, this train is on the track and it's going. And he said, yeah, it's all right, yeah. And so the, 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 the level of comfort is there for me. But when you go into something where you don't know the people involved, it can get a little bit tricky. Marty lets you do pretty much he understands actors, he understands acting. Sometimes, you know, you're, you're, you're tied to the script, of course, because it's a wonderful script. But at the same time, you come up with things, and he just allows that. I think what's happened, and I like this with films in general, is actors have a chance to work alone. It was, it was sort of new to me because I was used to the Sidney Lumet days where he had three, four weeks of rehearsal, actual rehearsal, where he put lines on the floor and he said, go there, go there. And you work through it with a cast. Here you have, uh, you don't have that kind of world anymore. It's, it's, it's a different world. So you have to find a way to absorb your, your character and the text in, in, the, in the privacy of your own, uh, wherever you are working. And it's great when you have the real character to portray. So takes the load off of it because you've got someone to research and look at and prepare for. Frank, we wash our own laundry around here. Oh, yeah? Now, you could be brought up in charges for I this. I always thought so, but the oh, reality is that we do not wash our own trouble, laundry. Sir, it just gets dirty. You are in trouble. I don't care if I'm in trouble. I don't care who gets it anymore, including myself. When I played Serpico, it was a real, he existed. So you spend your time with the person and you ask questions, that intimate questions and stuff. I asked Frank Serpico once well, when I had rented a house in Montauk and he came out and we were talking and we were out on the deck looking at the ocean we were talking about his life and him and, and I asked him Frank you know why did you fight this thing why didn't you just you know take the money 
and then give it to charity or something. And just move on with your, with, your, with your work, which you loved. And he looked at me and he said, a while, and he just said, Al, if I'd have done that, who would I have been when I listened to Beethoven? Now, how do you get that kind of research? I mean, I mean, when he said that, I thought, I, I didn't, I, I just, and also, again, another thing, some of the feelings you have when you, the instincts you have when you first meet people. As soon as I met him, I wanted to play him. It was that kind of thing. That doesn't happen often. You guarantee your delivery, say, as far as Panama. People love gangster movies. What is it about them? The audience endows gangster, gangster movies with a certain freedom. My offer is this, nothing. They want to be outside the law. They, 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 there's something thrilling about that. If I ever see you here again, you die. In real life, it's hard to dare and do things. Let's go do this work. They're taking chances. I think that's part of it.